OK, now to do any identification, it's absolutely vital that you have a pure culture, and that means that you don't have a mixture of different species uh, that you're doing the, the same test on as a mixture. Uh, and one way of doing that is to plate out uh, your sample and pick off the single colonies. A single colony, this is actually a pure culture anyway, so all the colonies are the same, but in a, in a real sample in a hospital, so you might get a mixture of different types of colony. And the one that you think is uh, the suspicious one and you want to identify, if you pick off a single colony, that's a pure culture. Okay? A single colony is all one species all one type of cell, and you're guaranteed that. So what we have to do when we're setting up an API 20E, the uh, biochemical test strip, is pick off one colony and make an emulsion of it in sterile distilled water. This is 10 mils of sterile distilled water. So I'm going to do that now. And turn the Bunsen from the safe setting to the hot type. And it's always useful to have two needles because if you sterilize one by the time you have sterilized the second one the first one is then cool and safe to use so I'm going to pick off just one colony off this plate and then I'm guaranteed that it's a pure culture as I say you can't do an identification on a mixture take the top off flame it shake off the colony into the 10 mils of sterile water flame again re-sterilize the loop. Some people say you should sterilize the loop like that so you don't burn your hands. But I've always done that for years and I've never burnt my hands yet. But that's slightly safer. Okay, so now I've got an emulsion of one type of bacterium. This is an unknown. We don't know what it is. But I've just called it one. It's completely unknown. I've got a second one there too, which would obviously make that up with a separate bottle. And now I'm going to inoculate an API strip. Right, I'm now going to set up an API strip. They usually come in bags like this. And now for the first time you can see an API, 20E that is. You can see it's got 20 compartments. And in here are dehydrated uh, biochemical reagents and the bacteria will react with them and give different colours, different reactions and that will help us very much, will give us a complete ID. So it's a wonderful system really because it will go, do a full ID uh, in other words species to the species level. So I put that there, pop it up, I then need pasta pipette. This is our suspension, pure suspension of the unknown bacterium, number one in this case. And you just fill up most of these compartments just to the, the top here but a few there's an exception where you, you fill it right up to the brim. So this is um, OMPG, which is a test for beta-galactosides. It's really a, a sort of a, an analogue of lactose and it changes colour. Um, arginine dehydrogenase, lysine decarboxylase, ornithine decarboxylase. Now this next one has a box under it and that means that you have to fill the compartment right up to the very top which gives a bit more surface area for oxygen. This is a citrate test and it's a, a utilization test. See whether the bacteria can use citrate as their only carbon source. And then we've got hydrogen sulfide production and now I'm starting to run out of liquid so I pick up some more. So, we've got up to hydrogen sulfide. This is a urease, testing for the enzyme urease. Tryptophan deaminase. The indole test, which uh, tests for the production of a substance called acetoin. The vogues prusker test, which tests for another metabolite. And that one, again, has a box under it, so we fill it right up to the top. And then uh, digestion of gelatin. Most bacteria can't digest gelatin. Neither can we, um, but some can. Uh, and that's another one that you fill right up to the top. Now, the rest of the strip to the right here is sort of, um, well, not sort of, <laughs> it's carbohydrates and related compounds. And a very important one, the first one, is glucose. Because if the bugs don't break down glucose, then they're not enterobacteriaceae. So you're probably using the wrong bacterium with the wrong strip.
So that was glucose, and then some other carbohydrates and related things, uh, mannitol, inositol, sorbitol, rhamnose, saccharose, melibios, amygdalin, and lastly, arabinose. And then I've finished with that. Okay, now there's a couple of other things we still have to do. Some of the compartments have a line under them. A box meant that you fill it, fill it up to the top, but the ones with a line, you have to add oil, sterile oil. So I've got some here, and that's because sometimes uh, they'll produce ammonia or hydrogen sulfide, which will affect the results of the other compartments. So effectively, you're screening it off and making it sort of semi anaerobic. So anything with a box underneath, we put a drop of sterile oil into. So that's the amino acid ones, also the hydrogen sulfide compartment and the urease test as well. And we've still got one other thing to do. This is a special tray to put the strip into, but before we close it up, we put a bit of water into it just to stop the strip dehydrating. And then pop the strip in and put the lid on and very importantly we must mark number one, culture number one and the date and usually you'd put your initials on. Now that strip then goes in the 37 uh, degree incubator for 18 to 24 hours and then at the end of that time you take it out you can read some of the colours, they will have changed hopefully um, but you also have to add some reagents. So that'll be the next stage. Here are a couple of strips. This is um, organism one. And this is a, a different organism, which I've, I've called number two. Now, uh, some of these you can just read the colour straight away, but with some of the compartments you had to add uh, reagents. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, the first one in order is TDA tryptophan deaminase, so we've got some TDA reagent, which is uh, ferric chloride, and we just add one drop of it to the compartment. Just one drop. Let it, let it run in. I'll explain what happens later. Um, the next compartment's called indol, um, and for that you can add COVAX reagent, or in this case I'm using one that's very similar called James reagent, and again we just add one drop. And I'll explain later what should happen if it's positive. So we have one drop. Just make sure it's gone in. It's already turned pink, but we'll discuss that later. And then lastly, there's a compartment here, VP, Vogue's Prusker. And for that, you have to add two reagents. They're reagents that can't be mixed together because they go off. So you have to add them separately. This is a very strong alkali. It's 40%... Um, potassium hydroxide so I'm going to add one drop of that be very careful with that because it could burn you I've got gloves on uh, and then VP reagent 2 which is alpha naphthol which is, um, is a carcinogen so again you wouldn't want to spill it on yourself so both these reagents are quite nasty again just, just one drop now that VP reaction takes about 10 minutes before you can call it negative <clears throat> the indole usually ha happens within a minute if it's going to go positive at all. Okay, well, having added all the reagents um, and allowed 10 minutes to, uh, for the reaction, the VP reaction to occur, then we can use this colour chart that API provide, which gives uh, negative results and positive results. Now, the system works that if you've got a positive result, it scores a certain number of points. Uh, and the tests are in sets of three. So if the first test is positive, it scores one point. If the second test in that set is positive, it scores two. And if the third test is positive, it scores four. So in a set of three, the maximum score you can have is seven, and the minimum score is zero, because if all the tests are negative, then it wouldn't score anything. Only positive tests count with this type of system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this colour chart to look at the two strips here. This is uh, organism number one an unknown, we don't know what it is, well I do, but you don't, and then there's uh, strip number two. So I'm going to use the strip and I'm going to record the results on this uh, API results slip here. 
And I should record them first of all as plus and minus. That's all the tests are. They're either plus or minus. There's nothing in between. And then I'll convert those plus and minus results into a score, into this summation score. One, two, or four for a positive result. Okay. So the first um, result here is, is OMPG, beta-galactosidase, or really lactose breakdown. And it's positive. It's gone a pale yellow color as on here. So I write positive on the result slip. Okay, next one is ADH, uh, arginine dehydrogenase, and that will go a sort of red colour if it's positive, but you might be able to see it isn't, it's, it's a negative. So the ADH is negative, but the other two amino acids, there's a lysine decarboxylase and ornithine decarboxylase, have gone red. Red means a positive, so that's two positives now. Then we've got the citrate test, and... Uh, that's utilization of citrate. That goes blue if it's positive. Well, it stayed a sort of pale green color, so that's a negative. H2S goes black, uh, and it's not black, so it's a negative. Urea. The urea goes uh, a sort of red color, quite a deep red color in some cases, and here it's quite pale, so that's obviously a negative. Tryptophan deaminase goes a sort of mahogany, deep red colour, and it's sort of just a sort of pale brown. That's just the colour of the ferric chloride, so that's a negative. Then we've got the indole test. That started off colourless. It's got a beautiful sort of rose pink colour, and that's a very definite positive for indole. That was what the one that we added the James reagent to, so we put a positive there. The VP also goes a red colour, and it hasn't. Red if it's positive, uh, colourless if it's negative, so that's a negative. Gelatin... Uh, what we've got in the gelatin compartment here, it's quite interesting, are um, charcoal granules in, in lumps of gelatin. So if the gelatin is digested by the bacteria, then the charcoal is released and the whole compartment goes black like ink. And it, you can see it hasn't. It's just like discrete lumps, discrete granules. So that's a negative for gelatin. And then we would expect the glucose to be positive because if it isn't, then it's not an enterobacteriaceae. So that's positive. And all the rest are, are sugars and related compounds. So the glucose is positive. Uh, the mannitol is also positive. The inositol has stayed blue. The sugar goes yellow if it's positive. That's one's blue, so that's a negative. And then we've got sorbitol positive, rhamnose positive, saccharose, malibiose. Uh, the amygdalin has stayed blue, so that's a negative. And the arabinose, the last one, is positive. Now, we just have to add one other thing here. Prior to using one of these strips, and they're relatively expensive, we would have done an oxidase test, um, and that would have come out negative if it's a true enterobacteriaceae, so I'm going to put negative there. Okay, so we've got the result. Better put that it's strain one, better put our name on it and all that sort of thing. And then I start adding up the score. So in those first three results, the first one was positive, and the third... So that's a score of 1 plus 4, so that makes 5. The second set, sets of 3, remember? Um, the first one is positive and the next two are negative. The first one scores 1. So down here, I don't know if you can see, we're going to get a 7-digit number and, and it's determined by the sets of 3. So the next one is only the last test that's positive, so that's 4. So I've got a score of 5, 1, 4 so far. Then another 4. And then um, the first and the last one, so that makes five. And then all of them, uh, these three sugars here as a set, are all positive, so that would make a maximum score seven. And then lastly, we've just got the arabinose positive. That's the middle one there, so that's two. So we've got a seven-digit number, 5144572. What do we do with it? Well, we can do one or two things. We can use an API catalog, and I'm going to look that up, and it should give us the ID. It won't always, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. 5144572. Right, here it is, 5144572, and it says very good identification. So I think we can be pleased with ourselves. It's a very, very good identification. It doesn't give any 
options or anomalous results. If there's more than one possibility, this system will give them. It will also give probabilities for each. So there's only really one uh, likely identification here, and it's Escherichia coli or E. coli. Very good identification. See, the next one says low discrimination. That's a different number, and that's a poor result. So this is a very, very good result, and I didn't fiddle it. It's genuine. Ah, 5215773, good identification. Okay, so we, we're in luck again. It says that there's two possibilities. It's most likely to be Klebsiella pneumoniae, or it could be um, Klebsiella planticola. But anyway, it's a fairly good result, that, and uh, they're both in the same genus. So we've got a fairly good idea. Not quite as good as the last one, but good enough.